Greetings, greetings, like a massive. We're live on the Instagram. It's Melody Mondays with Tanya Stevens. What? I'm so excited. I hope you guys are excited too. <laughs> Tanya Stevens, a bad, bad, bad dancehall artist, DJ, and a songstress, songwriter, producer, record label owner. Ah, she's done so much, guys. Big artist. <laughs> Hi, Mally. Hi, Rima. How are you guys? Thanks for joining me tonight. I see you guys coming in. Today is a huge interview with Miss Tanya Stevens. Greetings, everybody coming in on the chat. Everybody tuned in on the radio. You gotta love a Monday now, right? Right, guys? <laughs> I'm very excited. Very excited. Talk to Tanya Stevens tonight. Good evening, everyone. The great hundreds of singles, nine albums, a new one on the way, Miss Tanya Stevens. I'm going to send her an invite right now. I won't make you guys wait too long. And we're going to talk about the state of the world. We're going to talk about Jamaica's 60th. You guys know what we'll going this year for Jamaica. And we're going to talk about her extensive catalog. She's here. She's here. Big up. Big up, big up, big up. Hello. It's Tanya Steven. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, I'm hearing you loud and clear. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much for joining me here. We're live on the Roots Reggae Hub around the world. I'm so happy to have you because I'm such a huge fan of your music, Thank your you. catalog, everything that you've done. And I follow you on social media. You are an inspiration <laughs> because you, you speak your mind. You speak your yeah, mind. Everybody should. Yes. You know, and it's hard when you're doing media sometimes. People try to, you know, not, especially the internet and the way they've been shadow peopling and, you know, and, you know, just trying to silence the truth in a lot of ways. And I just yeah. love your, it, the fact it, that you speak up. I, I can't not. But, you know, the danger is not just that they silence the truth. The, the danger is they silence difference or disagreement mm -hmm. so it's not just about silencing the truth we 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 also help to create this environment when we think only the truth should not be silenced mm -hmm. because who decides what the truth is we often don't know what the truth is until after we've heard several sides and we've investigated and we've done and this is what the justice system is built on the entire court system is built on hearing all the sides yes. and investigating so we can determine what actually did happen. So what we've been doing is sterilizing the discussion spaces and it is extremely unhealthy and dangerous. So we really need to stop that. Yes. We cannot just go blindly into the night. We have to sort of take a light and shine it bright onto situations um, that we see that don't make sense, that we have to question. Yes. And have respectful discussions within which we allow each other to speak, even if we don't agree. Mm. Just allow each other to speak. Every single person has the right to have their voice heard. Yes. And if you don't hear your voice represented in the mainstream, Girl, open your mouth and make nice. Mm. Mm -hmm. And when it's all one sort of, everyone's saying the same thing, and then, you know, one second it's uh, considered, uh, you know, you're wearing a tinfoil hat, or, you know, they use the word theorist, you know? And, um, <laughs> and it's like, and then a year later, what you've been telling everybody from past last year, becomes facts now in the news it's and like this has been happening 
for a long time, but now it's more obvious and people are still acting like they don't see it. What is wrong with these people? But you know what though? I will wear my tinfoil hat with pride because I've never <laughs> been into fashion. I've never been into fashion. I'm always about function over fashion. So if a tinfoil hat serves the purpose, that's what I'm going to wear. And the rest of the, rest of the fashionable people could stand beside the emperor in his new clothes, in mm. their matching garment that none of us can see. And they could all stand out near naked together for all I care, as long as I am covered <laughs> by my tin oil hat. <laughs> yes. yes. Thank you so much. I was giving you a little introduction before you joined me. I was telling everybody about oh. your, your extensive catalog, hundreds of singles, nine albums. You know, you, you've done so much. You have your Trilantula. I was going to ask you about the name, but we'll get to that. And, you know, you're an entrepreneur. You're clearly an activist, clearly into your community and, you know, social uh, topics and not afraid to speak your mind. Thank you so much, uh, Tanya Stevens. But for whoever, let's say someone has never heard of dance hall and just only exploring reggae music and have never, you know, heard a song by Tanya Stevens, how would you introduce them to yourself, a newbie to reggae music? Wow, this is hard. Um, <laughs> well, if, Tanya Stevens, if I speak about myself in the third person, like, so I can yes. write this. Um, I, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm a Jamaican artist. I'm primarily reggae and dancehall, but I'm influenced by uh, every, almost every genre that I've ever been lucky enough to listen to. So I, I feel like music has no boundaries, uh, just like culture has no boundaries, and we influence each other, we inspire each other, and, and so we reach across all different spaces. And, and in music, the space disappears because the reach across bridges the gaps, you know? And so I make all kinds of music and I talk about all kinds of things because I'm a complete human and I have personal experiences. I have professional experiences. I have good experiences. I have bad experiences. You know, I, I had experiences when I was young. I'm growing older. I'm still having experiences. So it's, there's so many things going on that, I can't be any one thing or two things. I'm everything. So my music has been all kinds of stuff, child. And if you're sensitive, you may, you may just want to scroll on and find some other artist who matches <laughs> your sensitivity because I don't. <laughs> I, I love it. I love it. Um, I remember the 90s and listening to your music. I'm an 80s baby. <laughs> and you were a kid. Like, you should not have been listening to the music. I was... <laughs> I was in love with your music and oh just, my god gave me a type I'm of, going uh, to hell. you know empowerment <laughs> as a woman as a young woman I'm a, I'm Jamaican you know my parents are Jamaican Toronto born and raised but just something about reggae music as from a young child and dance hall music from a young child it like motivated me and touched my soul in a way and you know made me want to dance and I love dance so thank you nice. for what you've given for what you've given us as far as um your your extensive catalog goes. Well, Tell me about I, Tarantula I appreciate Records. That. I wanna say, thank okay. you. Yeah, I was I was saying I was saying I appreciate it and you're welcome, but you really should not have been listening to the music at that early an age. <laughs> um I'm not taking the blame for that. <laughs> no, it's so, not you. Tarantula Records. Yeah. Tarantula Records is a label that was formed by myself and one of my ex-business partners, Andrew Hinton. And we produced on that label, um, Gangsta Blues and Revolution. That's the label those two came out on. Um, we, we pretty much only worked with me. You know, um, it, was, it was an outlet for my music because I don't do well with censorship. I don't do well with limitations. I don't like the boxes that people tend to put music and musicians into. So I needed to have my own space to create my own sound and share my own messages without intervention or uh, interruption. And that's mm -hmm. what Tarantula Records was. I love we, that. we no longer, by the way. I love that because I'm a business owner and I tell all artists to quickly, you know, incorporate or at least a sole proprietorship uh, a business because 
you know, in that way, you become your own boss, you become, you own your royalties, your own, even your distribution, you can do it all the way around. And just ensure that your legacy is um, where it should be. Yes, it, it is nice as a creative to have control. Um, the unfortunate thing is that some artists want control so that they can say they own, simply for ownership. Um, I want control for, for an, an, inter, an uninterrupted process. So that's, that's why I needed the control. I don't think every artist should have control. Some of them don't do very well with it. Um, but if you are really into the, create, the creative process and your ego doesn't get in the way, if you're willing to, to focus on the end product and make it be about the, the song, then you definitely you should, um, you should retain control. Yes. Yes. Thank you for that advice for all the artists that are tuning in. I work with a lot of artists and some are up and coming. Some have been doing it for a while. And it's something that, you know, doesn't maybe not work for everybody, but in a long, in a lot, in a lot of ways, it can work well for an artist to own their own production company. Tell me about your childhood growing up. How was your family life? I know you have siblings. How, how was it growing up in Jamaica? Well, I, I I would say I wouldn't I wouldn't trade growing up in Jamaica for anything. But then I've only grown up in Jamaica, so I don't know what anything <laughs> else is like. But it was really good, you know. Um, I I grew up in a in a poor home. I I come from poverty. I come from the country. I'm from the bush. Um, mm -hmm. and the, the the beautiful thing about growing up in rural small communities in Jamaica is that. As poor as you are, you really don't know her, you know, until you get more exposure, then you're just another kid because the entire village lives the same, you know. Mm -hmm. um, there are very few things which distinguish between us. So we managed to have really rich lives, even in the poorest of our circumstances. You know, we had a, uh, abundance of fruits and abundance of everything that's natural and good in the environment we had it we had friends we could play we were safe back then or safer um and we had a, an entire village raising us so if i did something that my mother wouldn't approve of and her friends or neighbors or anybody her acquaintances saw i would be in trouble and they had the right to slap me and then she would slap me again. I'm not going to applaud that because that is crazy. And nobody can touch my <laughs> child. But with a little bit of tweaking, that, that could use some, some upgrades. We shouldn't have abandoned it completely. You know, we, we can't just have random strangers walking up and slapping children. No, that is crazy. But we should have the, the, village, the village parenting is a, is a method that it cannot be faulted. It works. And we should have kept it. That's why I, I love my upbringing in Jamaica. And I love it that I had all these rich influences because we were so close-knit that everybody was involved in everybody else's life. And it was just good. I love to hear that. I love to hear about um, people's experiences as a child, a young child, and where their geog geographical, geographical uh, location might affect their upbringing. You know, the fact that you have trees and you can pick your mango and eat it. And, you know, we don't, we have some apple trees here. I don't even uh, like apples, but it's just, you know, just the, the food you can get and plant and, and prosper from. And I, I do truly believe that it does take a community to raise a child, um, give or take the slaps, you know, maybe take a few slaps back. Yeah. But in the end of the day, <laughs> At the end of the day, I do I do believe in that in that sort of African traditionally way of life that a you know the community does raise a child. Tell me about your new album coming up. Is there a name? Is there a date? Is there like I'm so I'm I'm so I want to know everything. Yo, well, um, first of all, let me say um, my end of this is it seems to be glitching because. My screen is a little bit frozen, so you can hear me. I'm just gonna keep talking, but just letting you know. Um, yes, the I, new I album though, frozen, I'm... but I can hear you great. Oh, good. So this new album, 
um, that I have coming out. Um, I'm actually very excited. It's it's nice to be releasing an album again. I I, I create so much music that it would be a shame not to share it. And especially this time because I am feeling I'm really ripe with experience and emotions and I want to express, you know? So it's a good time for me to release an album because now is when I'm actually involved. I think a few years ago I would have been too removed from life. You know, I was just I, I was on autopilot. I, I have a show. I have another show. I'm on the road. I'm touring. I come home. I'm trying to catch up on my personal life. And so there was never enough time for anything. But during the last two years and all the madness that ensued, I had no choice but to get back inside of my head. And you know, when my thought process kicks off, it's like an avalanche. It doesn't stop. And, and I don't, you know, I, I don't uh, gather mass. I gather momentum. And that's what happened with, it, with making music. The, the album actually came out of me spending a good part of 2020 in and out of depression. It was rough. And I get annoyed when I hear people pretending that everything is okay. I don't like it. Don't do that because there are some people who are not okay and they think there's something wrong with them for not being okay because everybody else is pretending to be okay. Don't do that. We're not okay. This is not okay. And psychologically, all of us, all of us have experience followed from this. And we can't even begin to calculate the damage yet. It's going to take us years before we realize what we've lost. So out of that, I started, um, um, well, I, I spoke to Tads Jr. And we were always planning to do work together. And he said, you know, we're in the studio. We're still in the studio. Like, come in. And I went in. And that's where it started. And it, it, this was my therapy coming back out of these ups and downs, like these the little fluctuations that I have in my, my head, in my psyche, coming into the, into the studio actually leveled me out. And I felt like, it felt like I reconnected with my reality, with, with, with normalcy. And so the music just flowed, and it just flowed, and it just flowed. And right now, yo, ruined. <laughs> I'm so happy to hear that. Because I, I, I relate 100% of what you're saying. I really struggled the past two years. Um, I was so used to reggae festivals, concerts every week, um, always doing something out in, you know, in my city, doing my thing. And just to see the, the, the devastation of Toronto, downtown Toronto, the businesses that were closing, it was boarded up, our city didn't look the same. Um, it was a lot of depression as well. And I saw friends, family members suffering and just people even through the Roots Reggae Hub um, and the reggae family worldwide uh, reaching out and just, you know, finding a way through music to cope, you know. Um, I, I'm so happy to hear that you were able to overcome that and turn that into creative inspiration and be able to release that emotion through music. I'm so excited what you, for what you have in store for us. Girl is 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 madness and the, and the album is titled some kind of madness <laughs> it's, it's it's some madness kind of madness yes some yeah. kind of madness yeah well the thing is you know we have begun to normalize some very crazy things some very crazy things and even though the title track is a love song is it the, the, the title track is a love song but the some kind of madness is is a thread that runs throughout the album because so many of the things that I'm discussing are really just madness that we have not properly diagnosed and, and prescribed for. So, and, and you know, I'm, I'm a cynic. I'm, I'm a light cynic. Um, I have a twisted sense of humor. I laugh at stuff that I probably shouldn't laugh at, but if I have a choice between laughing and offending you or crying and hurting me, I pick laugh and offend you. I don't care how you feel about that. You have to take your feelings out of my activities so that I can act without hurting you, you know? And, and so I made, made this just encompassing all the things going on, like growing older, for example, I'm turning 50 next year. This, I realize, is the worst madness because if you thought being young was full of inconsistencies coming from the adults and, and, and a system in place for us to live in that doesn't sustain us psychologically, you know, mentally, emotionally, then wait until you catch 50. Mirror 
it gets worse. Because now you're, you're expected to live in a box. You have to climb into a shell and, and start doing things by, by other people's instructions who have nothing to do with you. Like, random girl, I just met you. Why do you have an opinion? Why are you speaking? Who are you? I don't know you and I do not care to. You could shut up now. And this is spread across the board in every facet of life. People just, just being full of feelings and sticking those feelings all over where they don't belong and just setting up systems for us to be imprisoned within. And I, I just, I'm saying goodbye to all of it. All of that madness. Listen, girl, when I turn 50, it's goodbye. Anybody who doesn't want to be rolled over, get out of my way because I'm just going to live for me. And I mean, I've always been on that journey. But at 50, I should not have even a relic of the past in me. Not even a relic. I don't, I, I don't want anything from the system. It's stupid. And the fact that we keep paying homage to the system and keep building onto the system and creating more madness for the younger ch kid, children coming up. Why are we doing this? Why are, we, why are we telling you how to dress? Why are we telling you, you what your body should look like? Why are we doing all of these crazy things? Why are we forcing people to still go to school and rack up huge bills to get an education that will never serve them? Why? We've, we, we actually already know that this is madness because we experienced it, our parents experienced it. Why are we still doing it to our kids? Why are we creating so many doctors and lawyers? Because we are attached to some value placed on them from the past that we want to go into our village and brag that ah, my daughter is a lawyer, my son is a doctor. While the poor kid is so unhappy, he just wants to do art. He just wants to do art. He wants to make macrame. Leave the boy alone and make him go make some macrame, dream catcher, and live him life happy. And stop trying to complete your life in your children. Stop trying to turn your children into little, into little compliments and accessories and, and, you know, continuations, a part two, a sequel. Go live your own life, ladies, sir. So I'm, I'm, I'm cursing for all of the money. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. This is this is the uh, the you that I see. I saw you weeks back at, at, at over your Insta Live, and you were at a campfire, and you're just speaking your mind and the truth and the realness um, that you that you speak is. I'm so grateful for that because you know we cannot be silenced, especially with what's going on in the world right now. We're here to talk about your single. Uh, as well, Diamonds in the Sun, featuring Sadella Marley and Diana King. What a trio. Um, <laughs> what uh, goddesses on, on a track, you know, three goddesses on a track. Tell me what it was like creating Diamonds in the Sun and working with Sadella Marley and um, Diana King, the concept for the song, the production team. Tell me everything. Well, the concept for the song, first of all, it, it, it's not even... This isn't even creative work, really. This is heart work. This is soul work. This is energy work. Because I am singing about, well, we three are singing about um, survivors of sexual violence, gender-based violence, you know, um, vulnerable, the, the women, the kids. Um, we know that men are actually affected by this too, but to a much lesser extent. We are the, the, the bigger um, group of survivors. And this is what we're talking about. And I speak from a place of knowledge because I am a two-time survivor of sexual violence, um, and so is Diana. And then all three of us, we work in our different ways to create space, you know, for, for, for women, for children, to create space and to create safe space, to foster conversation, you know, to empower. We, we've been doing that. This, this, this is our life's work, and this is what we're dedicated to. And I like the fact that, None of us actually uses this as our mantra. None of us has, has made it our identity. This is what we speak about because we can't not. So when you see Sila Lamali get up and she starts working with some girls and she's creating space for them and she, she spends from her pocket. She gives her time, her effort, and she does it thanklessly. She's never stepped up on a red carpet and said, Simia, I made to do this. Hey, you know, she's never said that. Um, and the fact that she just does that without any mention, it, it really, it, it touches me, I get goosebumps. You know, Diana, powerhouse, and talking about this comes naturally. 
working with them was one of the most pleasant experiences. There's no ego in the space we just created. It was about getting the, the product, getting the song to reflect what we wanted it to reflect. You know, and we did. And I tell you, besides the fact that it's, a, it's an amazing song, that if I wasn't a part of it, I would want to be a part of it. It is also a milestone for me and, and kind of, I, it's, it's a, a bucket list item that I didn't know I had. Because just think of the magnitude of this. Cidella doesn't really do very much in music anymore. She's more uh, on the administrative side uh, as a corporate entity. Um, Diana King doesn't really record very much either. Um, you know, and when she does, she's, she's not wide. She's not spread wide. She's not spread thin. So it's, it's, it's not a, a lot of stuff that you're going to find from either of them. And the fact that Sidella would come back into music and uh, into performance music and do something on my record. That in itself was a big deal for me because I really do respect her so much as an individual. And then as an artist, the uniqueness of this didn't, didn't escape me because how many people can say they have a Sidella Mali song? Well, only her siblings. So it's a big deal, you know? And then to use this kind of power and currency to do something like this, that means so much more to me than even music. It's an even bigger deal. So, yeah, that's how it come about. And trust me, I'm in heaven. I'm beside myself with this. I love that. I love that. Um, I want everybody to, if you have a question, now's the time. Um, we're halfway through. We're, we're going to ask questions uh, closer to the end of the show tonight. So if you do have a question, there's a little question box on the bottom right-hand screen of your Instagram Live. You're going to pop the question in there now. I'm going to take a couple of questions as well off of Twitter. I do see two already coming in. So if you do have a question for Tanya Stevens, Ms. Tanya Stevens, please drop it in the question box to the right-hand side on your screen, and I will pick the best ones, if not all, and um, ask the questions for the Empress, all right? I'm gonna play the track now for, so you guys can hear it. I have been uh, sharing it across social media and as well on the Instagram page and Twitter page. We've been playing it on the station ever since I got the track, Diamonds in the Sun. Cool. Uh, while, you, while you're playing it, let me, let me try to come off and come back on and see if this thing starts working again. Okay. While yeah, you're playing the song. Good. Yeah. That sounds good. All yes. right. Well, All right. Yeah. This is Diamonds in the featuring Sadella Marley and Diana King. This is a big tune, guys. Thank you for tuning in. This is Roots Reggae Hub. I'm Shana McCullough. You're tuned in to Melody Mondays on the RootsReggaeHub.com. And I gotta play it for you guys too here on Instagram. <laughs> This is the chat, guys. Big tune, guys. Who has been anticipating mm -hmm. giving some 
justice for along this while. I see those who were supposed to protect her were the ones who hurt her most. And the so called guardians of morality keep extracting the highest cost. Ooh, they're gonna make us cry tonight. Make us cry. I give them i can't play out the full song on instagram guys because they will take down the interview but following this interview here on instagram live i will be playing a curated list of tanya stevens music a personally curated list of my favorite tunes so to hear the full song out you're gonna have to tune in after the show at nine o'clock on rootsreggiehub.com you're gonna hear that song and a full list of Tanya Stevens for the next hour. So it'll be 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. on RootsRagingHub.com. I'll be playing strictly Tanya Stevens. And also some of her, my favorite uh, collaborations of hers as well. That was just a little taste. It's a beautiful song. I felt like tearing up when I first hear, heard it. And it's just, you all sound like angelic. You sound angelic. And the ladies do as well. It's a beautiful oh. song. Thank you for the gift. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. And you say you're going to be playing a, a few tiny scenes, so you're definitely on some kind of madness tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. And I'm ready for it. I'm 100% ready for it. Um, I'm prepping up to leave. I'm going away uh, this weekend for a week. I haven't been away in two, three years. So I'm in a dancing mood. Cool. <laughs> nice. Enjoy yourself. Yeah. Call out my name. <laughs> yes, I, I'm not leaving Canada, but I'm going to another province where there's mountains and, you know, hot springs and, you know, things that we don't oh, have wow. here in Toronto. Yeah. Nice nature. Yes. That's cool. It's <laughs> good to reconnect. You should. Yeah. Exactly. Tell me something that you would go back and tell your 13 year old self if you could. Oh my gosh. Um, I. With with the benefit of hindsight, seeing how I turned out and loving myself as much as I do, I don't think I'd want to tell me anything. I wouldn't want to tell me anything because I would have, I would I would interrupt that process and it would be easy to go back and say, avoid this bad thing. But so many other things would get changed along with that that I don't know where I would end up, you know. Um, and so I would just leave it alone. I will leave it alone because I think I did good. I did good. I agree. I agree. And if I didn't get your music, I'd be. I wouldn't be me. So <laughs> I hope you don't change a thing. <laughs> no, I won't. Oh, I won't. That's powerful. That's very powerful. I'm glad you have no regrets. Um, tell me about your musical mission now, and um, has it evolved or changed over the years at all? It has evolved because I have evolved. Um, as I grow, you know, my music is very personal. I, I talk about my experiences, the experiences of people around me, my opinions, you know, the, the way I see things. I, I share my thought process through my music. So as I grow, so has my music. And, and there, there are ideas that I, I in, included in my music in, in, in my youth that don't serve me anymore and I've thrown them out and, you know, um, so it, the music would now reflects where I am it, at any given point when I'm recording, when I'm releasing, it reflects where I am at that point. Um, the good thing about that though, is that I, I'm not afraid or I'm, I'm neither afraid nor ashamed to look back on an idea and say, Hey, that idea that I shared with you before, um, it's not the most sustainable. It worked for then. And that's what I thought then. But right now I can tell you confidently that that was foolishness so don't follow that one you know there are some songs that i i asked the, the audience do you think i should retire the song now and they say no <laughs> so i still have to sing the songs that don't serve me but it's okay because i have no i have no shame i know there's no embarrassment it's not it's not regret it's it doesn't serve me but it served me then so the, there's no, no nothing wrong with with showcasing it but of course my music has grown with me and has grown a lot, a lot, a lot. 
I love that. Some of your biggest tunes, Unapologetic, These Streets, you know, Ready for This. That's a huge tune. And I would never want you to take that away from, <laughs> from any of us because <laughs> there's so many, so many good ones. Um, hundreds and hundreds of, of singles you released and albums and such a huge catalog. So uh, yeah, the evolution is clear in my mind and I'm sure anyone who follows you um, so I'm glad to hear that, uh, you know, you've grown like you should. Everyone should grow. I'm growing every day and I try to learn something new every single day. Um, so I'm so glad I'm, I'm reasoning and speaking with you tonight. I'm learning something right now as well. Um, tell me oh. something that you've learned about the business. That you say there's a young uh, up and coming artist that, you know, looks at you and says, oh, my gosh, you know, what an inspiration. Something you know about the music business or reggae music business specifically that you didn't know when you first started, but you learned along the way. Well, I didn't know that when I was, well, when I was making music, I was actually signing up to have people be a part of every aspect of my life all the time. I didn't know that. Or I would have opted out. <laughs> I would have gone corporate or something. But, you know, I would say to the kids, um, don't take too much advice because music is about creative expression and advice changes process. And your music is supposed to reflect you. If the adult, I mean, I hear the adults complaining all the time and I, sometimes I get into my old woman self and I'm like, these kids ain't, you know. And sometimes I, I do that as an adult, but I do that with the understanding that this is not coming from an objective, critical space. It's coming from a very biased space um, where I'm attached to the things that I enjoyed when I was a kid. And, and the kids have no obligation or responsibility to appease me in my taste. So I would say to the young people today making music, make the music that serves you and your crowd. Don't try to make music for me because you'll never please me, really. I am pleased by Admiral Bailey and Papa Sun, and you cannot. You cannot compete with them. So you should make music for your generation, make music for your audience. And when the old people speak, just, just ignore them gently with kindness and with smiles and love. Don't, don't feed into the war. Just, just ignore them. Gently, but ignore them. You have to ignore them. Because trying to live up to what they did, the only thing we should share is the technical knowledge. We should share the technical knowledge. Teach them how to make the music sound good. Teach them how to make the production quality better. And then leave them alone so they can make whatever they make. Because this is how we catalog and this is how we preserve our era. This is how each era preserves itself. By cultural expression, by the pieces of visual art, by the sculptures, by the painting, by the music, by the dances. This is how we express and stamp our era. This is what's been happening since the beginning of time. That, that's how you could look back at the Victorian era. But now we, we have the modern, you have the 80s kind of building, the Miami Vice type of building. This is how you can look at architecture and see the, the time limits. You, you can see the time separations. We are trying to sterilize music so that you cannot look back and tell where anything ended and anything started, and that is the dumbest, dumbest thing ever. I want to own my era. I don't want to share it with the kids. <laughs> Go make your own stuff. I don't want the kids to duplicate me at all. I want them to build onto what I did and do something better. And if I'm still the best thing that, ha that, that is happening now, after decades, then we're stagnant. And we old people should not celebrate that. It is, it, it, it is a travesty if we are still the best thing that we're capable of making. The, it means that we didn't groom them. It means that we didn't share anything with them. We didn't raise them well. They're making, I, know, I know that they're making the kind of music that people call a bad because it, it, it reflects a criminal activity even. But there's always been music with criminal activity. Always. There never was a time when there wasn't. You know, and there's always been bad morals in music. If you ever listen to some of them love songs from the 70s, child, where do you think our trauma come from? Because those love songs taught us to let down our guard and letting bad people so they could hurt us. They, they, they normalize bad behavior. 
they really messed us up psychologically. And that's how we ended up with these children who are so messed up because we are messed up people who are children from the, based on the cultures that we had in our time. So really and truly, children do not listen too much to us. We don't know very much. We don't know, but we are failing. We have failed and are failing. Who gave us the authority to step up and talk so much? You know, we should talk less and listen more. And by the way, I love some of the kids' music too. Because Bacchus in a Market is a very good song. And I love Young Badness. <laughs> I love Young Badness. And the, the Massacre and, and um, Steph London. What? Yes. Sick. So old people, just chill and listen to music and dance. Learn for dance, man. Go stir fry. It's up in it. <laughs> I love that. I love that. You already answered one of my one of my next questions. Uh, who's in your playlist? So I'm glad, you know, you mentioned already some of the artists that you love and some of the young ones coming up that you think are doing big things. Big up, big up to all the artists out there doing big things in, in the reggae and dance hall scene because um, it's a worldwide movement. I realize that when I see 200, over 228 countries tuning into my radio station, the analytics come in monthly. Uh, I can check it daily if I really wanted to go that deep. And I see all around the world, Indonesia, Brazil, Kenya, you know, everybody's listening to reggae music. It's a phenomenon. So, um, you know, it's, there's so much still to come and I'm, I'm, I'm grateful to be a part of it. Thank you, Tanya, for, for sharing that. I want to talk a little bit about spirituality. Yeah, there's a grateful for. And, and people yes. should stop. Yeah? Yes. I'm hearing. Um, all right. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about your spirituality, your relationship with the Most High, um, a little bit next. Tell me about that. Can you repeat the question? You are breaking up. I would love to talk with you about your spirituality, your relationship with the Most High uh, in your life. How has it changed or your perspective on um, your life and spirituality? Okay, so I really don't have a relationship with the Most High. I have a relationship mm -hmm. with environment and my definition of my existence is a little bit different from what I was brought up to think, I grew up in, a, in an Anglican household um, who had to be in church every weekend. But that's where my journey away from church started because church doesn't serve the love that I have inside of me. Church doesn't reflect that. I have love. I have pure love. I have unconditional love, really, because I get angry, but I never lose the love. And church doesn't have that. You know, church discriminates. It teaches boundaries and borders and boxes and limitations. It teaches uh, people to segregate. And I don't want that. So I left. And I went in search of something that uh, at the end of the search or, or further into the search, I realized it's futile because everything I'm looking for is right here inside of me. And it's inside of you. And we connect. And the energy encompasses all of us. And we cannot escape it. And hurting each other is really ridiculous and futile because we are one. There's only one of us here, and that's all of us combined. And this is what I believe, you know. Uh, as, a fr as a friend, I were talking recently, and he would say, um, that's what I know, because belief is actually doubt. Well, this is what I know. We are one. We can't not be. There's only one thing here, and that's energy vibrating at different speeds. There's only matter. And all, all it does is coalesce differently in different spaces to form shape and it, that's us all of us one single being connected one big one being. whether we like it or not so this is where i am if you call it spirituality if you want to call it religion if you call it religion i will step away because religion is an entirely different animal that was created to derail us from that unity that oneness mm -hmm. religion is a vice is a is a is a, is a tool that was created to mm -hmm. derail us, and so I am into us. I worship us. I adore us. I love us. I believe in us. I believe in the best and the worst of us. The worst of us is capable of capable of doing the best things. The best of us is capable of doing the worst things. And when we live in this space, this relative space, where everything is really relative to everything else, I can't hold a definite entity 
and worship it and say, that's the one, because we're all the ones, all of us. And that is where I am. It, it, it doesn't exclude anybody else, really. But it, 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 it stops me entering a box. Mm -hmm. I can't be any particular thing because I'm everything. I love that. You're speaking a, a, you know, a language that, that I speak a lot of the times and you know, not everyone understands it because uh, it, I mean, if you look at it from a cosmic level, um, you know, and even a, a molecular level and an energetic level and all things are frequency and energy and it's a cosmic thing. So you are speaking my language. I love to, to hear your, mm. your point of view. Um, I do believe we are all one big human being and that, uh, you know, the, the day that it's almost like an ocean and we are all the waves, I like to say. That like, is, yes, I'm going to use that. <laughs> yes. yes. Every individual wave comes and it does what it does and it, ex it ex expels the energy and it's beautiful. It creates what we look at as the ocean in all its different forms. Sometimes it's calm, sometimes it's rough, but it's always beautiful. And it's one ocean. Yes. with countless waves i love that yes i'm I, i'm joining you in that in that yes. definition i love that i love that oh my gosh it's 60 years for jamaica um it's a big number and you know it's what does the 60th jubilee for jamaica what mean personally to you as a jamaican why we are the oldest child on the planet because we're a 60-year-old toddler. Um, we haven't really developed very much socially. I mean, we've added material structures. We've changed our appearance. But intellectually, psychologically, emotionally, we haven't really developed at all. In fact, I would say we, we might have regressed a bit. So I would challenge us at 60 years old to, to focus more on the us. We're a little bit too segmented. We're too political, you know, we're too tribal. And, and, and we're tribal in a way that if we were tribal as a collective, it would be good because then we'd recognize that we're all one tribe. But we are tribal in some very segmented ways which, which, which suggests that there's anybody else here. It's only us. And we need to get back together. And the 60th could be a good time to do that, to get back together and start seeing and acknowledging and hearing each other so that everybody has a voice in this national conversation and so that we can progress with cooperation instead of debate endlessly indifference, you know, because we have fought so much more in common than we have in, uh, differences. I love that. Um, I think with everything that has gone on, uh, even with the past few years, you know, in our governments, there's been a lot of, uh, personally, mine has, there's been a lot of mishaps. Um, and, you know, it makes you look at uh, where we were, where we've come and where we're going um, as a country, not just here in Canada, but also I'm a Jamaican. My parents are Jamaican. I look at Jamaica as my home too. I go there and they're like, foreigner, foreigner, but I'm Jamaican still. <laughs> <laughs> but uh you know i just feel like yeah there's a lot of work that we can do but if we come together as, as a collective and um you know the government only has gives the has the power that we allow them to have in a democracy um so you know never be afraid to speak up or to um say your part or do your part in your community and um and what you can do as far as your platform thank you for sharing and also speaking up for what how you feel what things that might not look good things that look good you just put it all out there um and i admire that about you big up to jamaica and all the jamaicans out there in the chat and listening worldwide uh i love jamaica and i love um our people one people one nation uh, if, um, next question I want to talk about real quick. I know people have a lot of questions coming in, so maybe I'll ask a few now before I ask my last two questions. I don't want to forget the, the, the questions from you guys. Uh, we have a question here from Steve Audi. Looks like they're asking, how are you preparing your daughter Kelly for her musical career? Oh, tell me about that. Yeah, I'm, I'm not preparing her. 
I mean, she's, she's recording and I have deliberately and consciously made every effort to stay out of the process because she's an adult and she's a creative on her own. She's making her own music. She doesn't sound like me. And I'm extremely impressed because she writes. And writing is my, my favorite part of, of making music. Um, but I don't get involved. I'm not a soccer mom. I'm, I'm, I'm not a helicopter mom. I'm not, none, none of those things. Because I don't assume that because I gave birth to her gives me any kind of ownership of her. She's not mine. You know, she's my offspring, but she's not my human. I don't own her. She makes her own music. And she does, does her own thing with everything. And she was the one who, who told me when she got into her 20s, um, she told me, listen, lady, you're going to have to detach. <laughs> don't be so involved. Step aside. Step back. Step back, lady. So this is what we, and I love because it was harsh at first when I just heard it because, you know, I'm a baby, this will breastfeed. And, and then you, you're saying I can't be involved, but then I thought about it and I'm like, you're right. I, I'm living my life and your life. I can't do that. So I step out of it and I listen to her music and I'm a fan. Um, I listen to it like, like you would listen to it if you heard it. And, and I don't, I try not to give much criticism because I'm not trying to make another Tanya Stevens. She's the first her. So we're not doing any duplicates around here. So she's, she's on her own. And hey, I think some of you guys will really like it because she makes some nice music. Lovely, lovely. I love to hear that. Thank you for the question, Steve, Adi. When, uh, we have another question coming from Shaquille. When is the next European tour? Um, so right now we're, we're doing um, the album release stuff and what I'm actually doing is, is um, press. I'm just introducing the album. Now, I'm not the kind of artist who does a big blast and a bang. If, if, if anybody has followed me over the years, you know that my thing is a little bit more intimate and more personal. So I'm more into having a conversation with you one-on-one -on -one and with your, your audience so that we can actually have a real conversation instead of a generic one where I just say, yeah, I love you. How are you feeling? I don't want to do that. You know, so I can't tell you when I'm going to be on the road touring. First and foremost, I'm going to introduce the album. Um, and also there are restrictions as far as travel concern, is concerned right now. I don't have a pass. Uh, the pass that I need to go to some good, few countries. So it, it interrupts the tour routing for what would be practical and feasible. And so I have decided I'm just going to go to the places that I can go to and introduce the music and chat to the people and we have a human conversation instead of getting riled up across a, a, a wide chasm on a, on a virtual platform. Um, we talk in person and we say, this is what I'm saying. Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? And then, you know, after that, we can discuss whether touring will get back to normal or not. But until then, I'm sending you music. And I'm sending you hugs and kisses. And hey, guys, if you're on Tinder or Bumble or OK Cupid, and you see me, do not call me a catfish. And twice, right? <laughs> <laughs> single and ready to mingle. Oh, I like it. Oh, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's a great question. I know you guys all want to see Tanya Stevens in your city or your country, um, your your town, wherever you might be. I know I do, and we just got festivals and concerts coming back in Toronto after a long, long, long lockdown. We were locked down right up until March this year. Um, can't with nothing, not even a restaurant. You can go eat food. So, um, you know, it's it's long time coming. We're we're looking forward to this, guys everybody all right let's see the next question yeah i just want to big up my friend Devon thompson in toronto working really really hard to to get things back to normal so people can be humans again yeah but let me answer genie sweetness question genie sweetness say you're so fit <laughs> Ooh, child, do i follow that or exercise well let me not be let me not be dishonest. Um I d I'm not really much of a, 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 a let me see now. I, I don't make all the best decisions when it comes to eating and, and, and lifestyle. So what I do is in all things moderation, every now and again I will go on a cleanse 
and I, I try to detox particular organs. So I will do a liver detox, a kidney detox, a heart detox, and I'll do, you know, lung detox, especially lung because I'm asthmatic and I have sinusitis and I, I have breathing difficulties. That's why me and a lot of people war over this mask because when I put it on, I literally get sick. I get sick. And I have people who have, have no medical degree chasing me down, trying to tell me that I'm irresponsible for not putting on a mask, so they want to kill me. I can't breathe. But anyway, um, I am now going to, I follow my, I listen to my body. So if my body says, hey, cut alcohol, I just cut alcohol. I don't argue. I just cut. If my body says, hey, I feel sluggish, go do something. I do something, but I don't like to exercise formally because it feels like I'm doing a lot of work and not achieving anything. So I like to do something. I, I, I do carpentry. I do woodwork. That's my hobby. And when I'm making things, it work, it's, it's a workout for my entire body. Just cutting board. It's a lot of squatting going on when I'm making things. It's a, it, it's a lot of lifting. So I'm working every single muscle in my body, including my brain, because I have to calculate and calculate and measure and measure and measure and make sure I cut correctly. So I exercise from head to toe by doing woodwork. I picture this, wood specialist. <laughs> I'm a wood specialist all around. Um, <laughs> and I, I make things, I make furniture, I make um, decorative pieces. I, mean, I make things that I want, like customized, but like I have a corner in a, in a house and I say, I'd like something here, what could go here? And I think to myself, mm, what could go here is this? And I make and so that's what I do. I love that. I love that. I'm not big into working out either. People ask me, like, do you work out? I'm like, uh, eh, no. <laughs> well, at least I like well, I they ask me. I must be doing something right. But I'm also, I like to fast and do cleanses as well. Um, not just because, not like, uh, not really thinking about doing it. It's just something like you. I'm reading my own body and being in tune with what my right. body needs and and that's that's a that's a serious knowledge that's a serious understanding of of yourself um so thank you for sharing that i have one question from twitter i don't want to forget my twitter people they're asking um out of all the places that you've performed where was your favorite my bedroom <laughs> <laughs> person but I'm very aware of the fact that nobody has to like my music nobody has to come to my concert nobody has to want to listen to me so the fact that I turn up to sing and there are people in the venue every single show every venue is equally special to me it doesn't matter if it's five people 500 people 5,000 people 5 million people I don't care everybody is special to me and if I'm singing for five people I'm going to give the same show I would have given to 80,000 people because they dis I'm performing for the individual and they deserve the best that I have to give. So there's, I can't pick a favorite. I, I would find that disrespectful. Like, so what, you, you, you prefer Kingston more than Moby? Oh, so what are you saying to Moby people? <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's all my people. <laughs> that, no, but it, 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 it would be a problem in my head because this is, this is all my people. And especially if it's a Tanya Stevens concert, these are people who came out to see Tanya Stevens. Mm. Uh, it's not, they're not randoms walking by and, and, and are, are came to see somebody else. They came to see me. So how can I then pick a favorite? It's like picking a favorite child. So no, I don't have a favorite place. I love, I love all the world. Everywhere has something unique and something special to offer. All the place. Mm. 140 pounds of love. Someone is asking, what what inspired the track 100, 140 Pounds of Love? 140 yeah. Pounds of Love was, yeah. let me see now, 140 Pounds of Love was 60 pounds ago. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, it, it, it was about <laughs> stepping away from the stereotype of a relationship you know, needing the other party to validate you, um, needing to own 
you know, needing to control and just saying, I'm not doing this for what it looks like from the outside. I'm, this, is, this is me. And you're getting all of me, every bit of me, the, the vulnerability, the, the, all of it. Um, and, and it, you know, it's, I like, I like to think that my relationships are mostly organic. And that's what I was trying to sum up in 140 points plus. It's a killer rhythm. And I just so love that rhythm, you yes, know? So I just wanted to do something really sweet and smooth and cool on it. And I hope I nailed that one too. Clearly you did. Clearly you did. It's stuck in people's minds. Uh, let's see what other questions I can get. Uh, when is your next show? Um, so let's see. I'm performing in Kingston on the 23rd of this month, guys. Kingston. Yeah, I, I posted a flyer. Check it out. Check it out on your Instagram page, right? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I posted. I should. I need to go post it on the other platforms. It's. It's. Um. I'm. Not, I don't remember the place, but it's in Kingston on the 23rd of this month. So come, if you're in Jamaica, if you're in Kingston, come check it out. Germany is out. Thanks for the music. Germany can never be out. Germany always a keep. Germany, you know, Germany is the second reggae capital of the world. Yes. And we big up with German family because we we make good music together and we have fun together. Um, we party. When I'm in Germany, I feel like I, 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 a little bit of reminiscence of Jamaica. You know, so it, it Germany can't be out. And then my, my co-workers are on the road. So go out and go check them out. You know, the fact that I am not going to some places doesn't stop the music happening. It's a holy power. You think how one, people make a, one person can make an industry. You know, mm -hmm. so we have a lot of artists on the road right now. Mr. Say, Spice is supposed to go to Europe. Shensi go to Europe. Come out and go watch them perform. Make can tell you this. Spice is going to give you entire band of Mbele show. You, you're going to get up every single dollar you're going to get something for it. <laughs> so go out and go check out the shows. Reggae is alive and well. Dancehall is alive and thriving. Go out and go check out the artists. Them. And don't just sit there and say, when is Tanya Sims coming? Because Tanya Sims is not the only artist. <laughs> yes, yes. Big up Shantia, big up Spice. I know both of them are going to be in Toronto uh, very soon. I know Spice is supposed to be here if she's not already here. Um, and also Shantia has two shows yeah. in Toronto one in August and one, I believe, in September festivals. So you guys can check them out as well in Toronto if you are here, if you're in my city. Um, there's a lot of shows going on. I'll be talking about those shows sooner to the dates, closer to the dates. New York, these are all questions about when you're coming to see them. Oh, goodness, guys. She's oh, my God. I'm coming everywhere. <laughs> let's I, let's I make this question. Which one of your songs would you say is the most was the most fun to write and record oh gosh um you have so many how do you choose because one? so many of them are fun yeah i can't i really can't can't pick the songs which are most fun to me are the ones which i know are going to ruffle feathers the one that i know um any song that is going to challenge the status quo any song that's going to take people out of their comfort zone those are the fun songs for me to make because People shouldn't have comfort zones. How are you? You know, you should have just a, a, just an, an, a life, an energy, and try to experience as much of you as possible. You shouldn't commit yourself to com comfort zones. And when I make songs which shatter the illusion of, 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 of sameness uh, and, and, you know, serve the past and, and try to anchor us to the past, when I make songs like those, I'm actually grinning, you know. I'm <laughs> if I had a mustache, I'd be twirling it <laughs> because people people need to be made uncomfortable. People need For to sure. be made you uncomfortable. Down the box, because, punch down the box, kick it down, or whatever you have to do. Yes, because it, the, only through some amount of discomfort can we possibly grow. Only through some amount of discomfort, so. I like, I like providing the discomfort because I realize that a lot of people don't want to. Some people don't want to upset the upper cart because they don't want to deal with the, the backlash. Backlash never bothered me before, you know? So I don't have a problem doing it. And it's fun. It's really nice to watch them turn pink when you see the, 
the the noses go up and then and then the face goes red and uh, and the pink spreads <laughs> and they're hyperventilating inside and you can see them dying and it's like yes one more down <laughs> I love it. I love it. If, it, if the song doesn't make you blush, I don't know if it's a good song. I see some people typing in the chat. It's a pity. A uh, big tune from you, Tony Stevens. Love that song. Um, it's a pity. You already have a wife. <laughs> big tune, guys. I see a lot of people. <laughs> a lot of people in the chat are bringing up that tune. A uh, huge song. Huge song from you. Um, yeah. Another question. Tell me something most people don't know about you uh, or would never guess. Why would I want to do that? <laughs> <laughs> I, I share, I share with, with limitations. Like, a lot of people think I overshare. I do not. I only share the things which are relevant to others outside of me. I, I defend my privacy and my space violently. Um, there's nothing about me that's intimate and personal that I want to share. And anything about me that's shareable, people already know. There's nothing that I could tell. I don't know. I've told people that I do woodwork. That's my hobby. I've oh, told people, people thing. know that I have a kid. I like to go fishing. I would fishing. have never guessed that you do um, woodwork because most men do like stuff like that. Uh, I made a mirror like back in grade six. I made a mirror once. But <laughs> that's the closest I got to woodwork. So that's, <laughs> that's huge. That is actually huge. What kind you of things do you though. like it's, to make? Listen, it's therapeutic. I make anything out of wood. Um, I I like making furniture pieces because then I get to use them. Like you know, I don't like I don't like activities which don't result in a in some kind of a product or result. Um, so when I make a chair, I can sit in it. It works. I've made I made my bed. Um, I I made all the beds in my home. I didn't. I I, I bought mattresses because anybody can walk into a store. All it takes to walk into a store and get. The same bed that a million other people have is some money. Mm -hmm. But nobody, nobody has one of my beds because I only made beds for myself. So it gives me a unique piece. Um, even if I copied something, it still doesn't come out exactly like that. It is going to have some kind of variation. So my pieces are unique and, and they're custom to me. They suit me, my pur purpose, um, well, us, my household. Um, and I, I made all the shelving. Anything that can be done with wood, <laughs> I, I make it. I <laughs> <laughs> big up, big up, big up yourself, Tanya Stevens. I need a bed right now. I mean, I'm shopping for a bed. I might, get, I might order a custom Tanya Stevens bed. <laughs> oh gosh, I would. If I was there, I would come help you. It's so much, and it's so much cheaper too. And I love to not spend. I really, I. I mean, sometimes when I sit and I listen to people brag how much they spend, I glitch. I like to brag how much I didn't spend. <laughs> like, I walk to the, the hardware store, and I buy wood, which is cheap. And then I make something that would be sold really expensive. And I, and I giggle to myself like, yo, I'm winning. <laughs> I love that. I like to save money, too. I love saving anywhere I can. I'm very... Uh very few rural frugal especially in the grocery store uh, gas and groceries are sky high here in canada it's crazy uh, oh gosh girl start, start growing food start growing food even if you live in an apartment listen look up living wall green wall if you don't if you're not already familiar with look up living wall and get yourself a wall that feeds you you can grow lettuce and all your herbs you can there's so many you can grow potatoes in a pot you know, you can grow Irish potato in a pot um, and, and cut down on the dependency on, super, on, the, on the supply chain for food, as well as guarantee yourself some better quality food because the things that they're doing with the commercial food to make it more profitable, you're not going to do that to your food that you're going to put in your mouth. So it will be safer food automatically. If you have a flower garden, incorporate some edible stuff in it. And and especially great on herbs, it's such a... I have a, a kitchen garden, which when I'm cooking, I get my peppers, my bees, and my, uh, all my herbs from it. And mm -hmm. it feels so, besides, the, 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 besides not having to buy it, besides what I think, how much safer I think it is to eat from me, it also feels so good to know that I did this. 
you know, I can feed myself. I'm, I truly am an independent being. Jamaica, you should try to catch up. Be truly independent. I can yes. feed myself. Yes. So I encourage, I encourage everybody, even, and people always tell me, but Tanya, I live in the city and I live in an apartment. No excuse. Green up your apartment. Green it up. And also improve your air quality because, you know, the plants give you oxygen. It's in, you win in every way. There's no losing in this. So start growing your own stuff. Yes, I'm going to try. I tried to get a few plants, you know. I wasn't that good. I had to get a cactus. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe you're on second thought. Maybe you should grow a stone. <laughs> <laughs> Something easy, you know. I got to start from scratch. Yeah, here. Petra. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, you can improve. I can give you tips. I can give you tips because I used to be awful too, and you can improve. It's, it's more about intention than skill, and your plants are living entities, and they respond to you, and they, all, they provide therapy too. I speak to them. We interact with each other. I see results. The ones I, I speak to, give me better, they give me better output. So if I, if, I, if I don't get to stop and hang out with the plants, they look different. By me just watering them and giving them food, they look different than when I actually sit with them and have conversations. And I, you I and, keep you and my mom would get along so, great. She goes out in the forest, she hugs trees, she speaks to the, the, the birds, the bees. You know, she's a true of that. Trust me. I love that you, you speak to your plants. I really believe in that. And, and they're, they're intelligent. So, so this is the conversation I usually have with vegans who, who are a little bit more aggressive in their promotion of the vegan lifestyle because they, they speak about not eating animals like from a, from a perspective of humanitarianism, like, like you, you emphasize with the animals. But the plants are alive too, and they're smart. And if you watch them, if we actually were observant, we would see that, that they actually communicate and they try to communicate with us, but we just don't listen to anything. We don't even listen to each other, mm. you know? Mm. But I'm telling you, develop a different relationship with the plants, and you will realize that sometimes they call out to you. I'm driving on the road, and when my daughter and my nephew laugh at me all the time, but they, the plants, I, they, they catch my attention. They call out to me, and I take home a plant, and then... When I take home the plant, not knowing what it is, just thinking, this looks like an interesting plant to have. And then when I look it up, when I try to take the picture and I look it up, turns out one of the most nutritious plants to have in your garden. It's a good herb or it's a good um, medicine, you know. And I think that's a plant telling me, hey, you need me, take me home. And it works. I love that. I love that. Talk to your plants, guys. You heard it here first from Tanya Stevens. It makes a difference. Your tomato is going to taste good. Your lettuce is going to be big and green. And if it's the Mary Jane, you know, that's it. <laughs> You're going to feel nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right, guys. Um, so we're going to come to pretty much the end of this interview. I do see some more questions, but I can't get to them all. Thank you, everybody around the world, the Reggae Fam. We're starting to have Reggae Fam worldwide. Tuned in on the radio each and every week. This is Melody Mondays with Tanya Stevens. And remember, after the show, I have a curated personal list of my favorite Tanya Stevens songs that I'll be playing for right up till 10, 15 now, because um, it's an hour long list. And it's all their baddest tunes and greatest tunes <laughs> and most inspirational tunes, in my opinion. Tanya Stevens, thank you so much for this reasoning with me tonight and conversation and just being your light and honest and true to yourself, soul, being. Thank you so much for your time. I'm so grateful. Oh, it, it really is my pleasure. And thank you for, for giving me the opportunity to have this conversation because I think communication really is key to our survival. So thank you too. Thank you. And to anyone who's listening on the radio and anyone who might not be following you yet here on Instagram, where can they find you? Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, social media, YouTube, where can they find you? What is your handle? On, on Instagram, it's I am Tanya Stevens. Um, more recently on TikTok, doing foolishness, it's I am Tanya Stevens. Mm -hmm. On Twitter, it's Tanya underscore Stevens. 
and on Facebook, I think it's just Tanya Sims. I'm not sure, but either way, it's the one that blue ticks, so it's easy to um, to figure which. Thank you so much. Uh, I will be in touch and, and and also be looking out for the new album coming up. Big, big, big album. I'm looking forward to it. We are all thirsty for more of your music. And it's been a long two years. So we need we need you. And all the artists out there that look at Tony Stevens and they're inspired by her, go follow her. And she's the realest she's the realest of the real. You know, so you can't you can't miss a beat. <laughs> love you. Thank yeah, you so no, much. No, 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 And everybody remember, for those who are asking me when I'm coming and when I'm going to be on tour, do remember all the other artists, most of the other artists are on tour now. So go check mm -hmm. them out and tell me how the show goes. And share, share the videos and tag me so I can see the performances and live vicariously through you. We got my friend in my up on the road. Yes. All right. I will definitely do that. Thank you guys for tuning in again. This is Melody Mondays. I'm Shayna McCullough signing out. Thank you, everybody. See you next week, 8 o'clock. Bye. Bye.